Music still doesn't want to cooperate, but fuck it, it's fine. Well, I could just play my stuff for this session. Sure, that's fine. I'll drop the link to what I'm listening to. I have no idea that it'll be fine for YouTube or whatever. If you want to listen to that real quick, Tom. Um, yeah, just yeah, throw it throw it up there and I'll I'll see. Right now, Windows Media Player just keeps crashing, so I'm gonna have to give it a second here. I just go on YouTube and I search D and D ambience every time. And <laughs> whatever looks good from there. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm ready whenever y'all are ready. Uh, then I'm ready. Then it sounds to me like you're ready for a recap. Okay. Um. So let's see. Last time we started, um, Goji, Frizden, and Futan uh, woke. Well, not woke up, but came to after having fallen down the wormhole. Um, and uh, dusted themselves off, got their bearings. They were in a rather large room, um, something beyond 60 feet below where the arena was. It was pretty, we pre fell pretty far, I think. Um, <clears throat> there, were, uh, there was moss on the walls and the ceiling in spots that gave us enough light that we could see, uh, Futon could see without a torch. And we've managed to find that oh my god the music's working this is fantastic managed to find that moss throughout the cavern that we've been in so far um haven't had to use any torches uh we did have one dancing light spell cast but that was for a specific circumstance which i'll get to a little bit later um so uh taking a look at the room where they found themselves there were a few different exits from the room one of which was the way that the worm came barreling into the room and the way that the worm left we decided not to go that way. We ended up going, I think, north north from that room. <clears throat> and the passage uh, wound around till we ended up basically going south. Uh, the first room that we came to after um, walking through that passage for some time, uh, we heard a strange chittering noise from one of the corners of the room. We weren't able to tell what it was when we were standing in the doorway just trying to peek around. But in walking into the room, we saw that there were uh, at least two, I don't remember the exact number, a couple of beetles that uh, were seemed to be focused on a rather large mushroom. There were a number of mushrooms in the room, but there was one large one in the corner, and these beetles were facing it and making that chittering noise. Um, rather than uh, confront the beetles, we just tried to walk through the room briskly to the entrance on the opposite side of the room. While doing that, we attracted the beetles' attention. They turned to us, I think, uh, and we saw that there was a kind of a blue light emanating from their mouth parts, uh, which was a little freaky. And then while we were still trying to traverse the room, the um, mushroom that they had been looking at started to kind of shake a little bit. So... <laughs> We moved even at a more brisk pace toward the opposite side of the room, and by the time we got to that doorway, we looked back one more time, and the mushroom had started moving of its own accord. Little stalks at the bottom were acting like feet or legs, and it was slowly propelling itself across the room. So we noped the hell out of there and kept going south. Um, it seemed like the mushroom was going at a slow enough pace that it was either never going to catch up with us or it would slowly quickly give up when it saw that we were well out of its reach. We haven't heard anything about it since then. After moving a little bit further south, we came to an intersection in the corridor, um, and there was a strange musty smell, like uh, wet or damp leaves or old earth. We couldn't tell exactly which direction it was coming from, but we ended up deciding to leave that intersection and go westward. And that westward path went on for a, while, a ways until it also turned south. Um, and after moving south again for some time, we came to a pretty large room with a cavernous ceiling. And in the room, amongst other things, there was you know more mushrooms, none quite as large as the one we had seen walking around. Um, there was a small pond area in this room, 
And then there was also this kind of a, a rise in the terrain surrounded by stalactites and stalagmites that was kind of hard to see from where we were. Um, there were a number of rats in the room. Futon made friends with the rats. And while he was doing that and Brisden was heavily engaged in watching Futon do that, Goji decided she was going to explore that area that was uh, occluded by the, the stalactites and stalagmites. Um, our group learned what the difference between stalactites and stalagmites are, and a useful little mnemonic for remembering which ones are which. Um, Goji was... Uh, she got through the, the, the stalactites and stalagmites that were kind of the barrier of the entrance of this little rise, um, but as she was going in further, she realized it was going to be too dark for her to really see properly. So Vrizden cast a dancing light spell, which um, he threw up basically like right in front of Goji to the area that she planned to be going to, which provided enough light. It was very helpful. So she kept going forward, and before she knew it, she was struck by darkness. There had been, uh, there was some kind of stalactite monster, and I, I know you gave us the name of it, Mike, but I cannot remember what it was called. It is dark a uh, dark mantle. Dark yeah. mantle. <clears throat> Killer stalactite. Actually, I can uh, give you a picture of it since I was able to take a picture. Of oh, yeah. Monsters. Um, and I say killer stalactite. It wasn't actually a stalactite. It was clearly a creature that was disguising itself or rather had evolved to be camouflaged as a stalactite. Um, and it cast an area of darkness spell around Goji so she couldn't see anything. At that point, uh, combat started. Um, Futon uh, came down to try to get a hand. Oh, yeah, that's disgusting. Try to get a handle on what was going on. Uh, I think I think Goji shouted out or something and got Futon and Frizen's attention. Um, and after some confused fighting on the part of Goji and some uh, more effective uh, combat on the part of Frizen and Futon, they managed to kill this dark mantle creature after it kind of danced around a little bit went back inside the area of darkness that it had cast uh, we managed to uh, I think we killed it right um, and then yeah he killed it yeah so after that took a nice deep breath uh, we decided we were going to rest up um, near the pond Futon could uh, entertain the rats and while we were resting um, Futon decided he was going to play the bagpipes for us, um, which in this kind of acoustic space was probably pretty jarring to the ears. But in any event, it seems to have woken up some bat swarms that must have been sleeping on the ceiling somewhere nearby. And uh, our rest was quickly interrupted when the bat swarms attacked us seemingly due to the uh, bagpipe music. They were they were critics of the bagpipes. Uh, so we fought around the pond area against these bat swarms. Um, it was pretty touch and go uh, so soon after the uh, dark mantle fight where I think Futan and Goji both took some pretty significant hits in those two fights together. But Frisden was throwing heels and... Um, Goji used Second Life, managed to keep herself conscious. Uh, took out the bat swarms, rested a little bit longer, and then started making our way, I think, out of that room toward the west. And as the passage again curved more southward as we walked along it, it also started having an upward incline that we could feel. And uh, at a certain point, we found a... It was part of the surface of the wall, but it was clearly something artificial. It had been carved in such a way that it kind of looked like a separate a section of wall in what was otherwise a natural cave. And on it uh, was inscribed, I don't remember which language it was. Was it Dwarvish? Uh, yeah, it's the Dwarvish uh, written rune language. Okay, it was in the Dwarvish rune language, and the, the text said, To Dark Lake. And so, um, with that information, we were able to look on our... I don't, I don't actually think we have access to this map, right? The party doesn't. The party does not, no. no. But, um, on the map that Mike has provided us for the campaign, we found Dark Lake up here in the northwest portion of the map. 
So we have a rough idea of where we are in the Underdark. Um, <clears throat> so we uh, took note of where we were heading, kept going southward, and then we entered another room, uh, the description of which I don't remember exactly, just because we were only in it for a moment before the campaign stopped at that point, session stopped. But we saw a, I believe it was a drow, uh, on the other side, or on the eastern side of the room, I think, coming out of a passage into the room that we were just about to come into. And with the drow were two demonic looking figures. Um, if I remember correctly, the drow saw us and before we could start any kind of communication. The drow said something in a language that at least Goji didn't recognize. Maybe the other party members did. Said something to the two demonic figures that it was with. And they all snapped, it, snapped to attention and looked in our direction. And I think that's where we left off. That is indeed. Thank you very much. Is there much anything that I missed? Uh, nothing important, no. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, as Pem stated, you are in this situation currently and getting ready to uh, position yourselves because you're going to have to fight this a coster of yours and please go ahead and give me initiative while I share you with the map. You got it. Ooh, nice map. No crap. Boy, I'm really and... jealous of your guys' dice colors. You did a great job picking those out. <laughs> I didn't pick. This one's one of them. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, yeah, I used the color change anything. And when like I was I said, using the color change, I just did the, like, most classic red with white text ones. Uh, like I said before, I didn't like the cavern entrances that this modular uh, map that they have. So those red circles that you can see are the other entrances into the to the cave. Okay. And you guys can position yourselves on the western side of that creek, however you wish, before we start. Okay. Um I think Yeah. Make them come across the water to us? Is that the plan? <laughs> that works for me. Okay. How how deep... Uh, I know you're busy right now, Mike, but how deep would you say that creek is? Mm. Is it something we I mean, could wade across? That, you could wade across it. It would be... Bitter, oh, not that I want to. I'm just, yeah, I, I don't want to. I'm just curious. Uh... Maybe at the deepest two feet down oh, the middle. Okay. And it's not quite a uh, jump across. It's a little bit wider than that. Uh, it's about 15 feet across. Okay. So you get your feet wet, at least, trying to cross it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So if you're all ready, then Brisden will be first. All right, I'm going to get the battle music going. Oh, joy of joy. Joy! Joy! Okay. Uh, this seems like a fight I won't bless up. So I'm not sure if, because you put that effect on yourself, whether or yeah. not it's going to actually affect everything in general, because I didn't set the sun, the day, the uh, lighting levels. So I'm just going to go ahead. It seems to and... not be right now, but. It's I not okay. I can remove it. Well, yeah, I could just take it off though. Oop. I just didn't want it to affect your rolls by accident. Yeah, I appreciate you for looking up. Where's my spell? There's my. Oh. I love doing that. 
<laughs> uh, that is what's called an action. I'm percent sure. Nice. Yep. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Oh, that was a crazy sneeze. Okay. <laughs> Bless you. So we're blessed. We'll never up. know. Yeah. No, the internet will never hear my sneeze. Mm. Mm. Uh, Deselect. And I, I'm gonna let you guys be in front of me. <laughs> Seems like a good idea. I think uh, I think that's a place I feel safe to be at. Oh, that's cool. It gives you guys a little icon on your avatar that you've got blessed. Yeah, when you've got blessed, that's neat. That's gonna help me. Oh, the little plus sign. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. I hit next actor. So I think it passed, although it didn't do anything. So unclear. Ah, uh, it didn't have you selected. Okay. <laughs> there we oh, go. Huh, that's funny. Uh, okay. Oh, as far as the uh, the image for these mains, as these creatures are called. Uh, I had to add in this creature myself, so it's just a picture from the monster manual. Whenever you're looking at it, okay, that's why it looks. It like works. That. I had to zoom way in to see it wasn't just an image of the creature, so no worries. On well, I just the reason I put it on there is in case one of you decided to use the avatar view, which I'm doing right oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. This guy has no options. I love though, playing this do. game as Dune. Since it's difficult terrain, it will stop there. Oh, crap. You got that. Okay, it is now the Drow's turn. Eighteen to Futon. Oh, that I'm a class of sixteen, yeah. <laughs> Three damage to you. Okay. And give me a constitution saving throw. Alright, one minute. I gotta find that. No no no, it's uh it's Futon. Oh thank you. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> you've been poisoned. Oh, wait, so I didn't get hit at all? No, it was too. Oh, it was too I'm sorry. Out. I just assumed that it was me. Okay, just reading off what it says, let's just say that this variant of poison that it's using puts you to sleep if you fail five saving throws on it. Okay. It's your turn. Resist that poison. Um, do I have to do another roll for that, or is that the one I did? I'm Suppose. sorry. Uh, oh, the save? Yeah. Uh, do that at the end of your turn. 
Okay. Um... Go for that guy. Constitution again. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, roll a constitution. And that saves. You don't have to worry about falling asleep now. Okay. Okay. They're still too far. It's your turn, Goji. Okay. Uh, remind me, how, how much distance does one square on the map represent? Five feet. Five feet, And okay. if you want to move through difficult terrain, it turns it to ten. Okay. Uh, I'm just wondering for the minimum range on my crossbow. Um, but it looks like I'm not going to fuck with the crossbow this time. So if I go there... And then target you, and then attack with the club. Oh, so I was just looking at what you did, Futon, and it looks like you were targeting yourself, which is why you have eight damage instead of five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I changed it back to five. Okay. Uh, that's a hit, Goji. Yay! Okay. Oops, hang on. Oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, I was looking at the maps like, why did this dot turn red? I hit myself. Ooh, this this main is looking much rougher than his image currently portrays. Um, so... I think I'm just gonna... Yeah, that's that's my turn. I'm just gonna make sure I'm on steady feet in this creek here. The water's not flowing very fast, is it? No, it's just a, a steady stream. Okay. It's your turn again, ba -da -da -da. Ba -da. Let's go ahead. Uh, let me know for these. Oh, move me. Move me, game. Move me. I want to move. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. There we go. So, for these two here, Mike, are those uh, difficult terrain or are they not quite? No, no. Let's just go with, like, they're just on a sh uh, very shore. You can walk softly. Okay, perfect. Right. Just enough movement to do. Now, if from that square right there, if you were to move, that would be difficult terrain. Yeah. Select it, you do. Let's attack that one. Okay, double click it. Double click it. Kick its ass! That it? That it. And one of the creatures is dead. Now you've polluted this water. Nice kill. <laughs> Hooray. Uh, if you're as drink, the... do it upstream. <laughs> <laughs> as the creature dies, uh, as a special thing of it, since it None of you are a demon. It just poofs the vapor and kind of settles towards the top of the cavern. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? You know there is. Oh, snap! <laughs> Isn't there always? Actually, let me check. There always What's is. the range on a deck? <laughs> the throwing range on a deck. Uh, it should be more 20, than 20, 60. Okay, yeah. The drow is just barely in range, so I'm going to use my cleric thing and throw a knife at it. Okay, that's my turn. Dang. And 
He threw a knife at the drow? Damn, nice shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so now it's got three targets. It'll go for Goji. Bring it! Oof. So much for that. Uh, Yay. <laughs> I'm going to say that's a successful dodge. Oh, nice. it was very successful. <laughs> okay, no, that's an action. Uh, it'll just take a few steps back, and, and it is futons. Okay, go a little bit forward. Go try and go over this time. Um, target him this time. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Uh, well, they both hit, so take yeah. one of them. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Bad. Me? Oh. Uh, no. no. Sorry, I thought you said Pam. My mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. You had too low of a roll. This thing finally gets to do something. <laughs> Wait, did you? Yeah, you, you're hitting again. yourself. You, you're hitting yourself again. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just target both of them or something. Stop hitting yourself. Uh, when, you, when you're targeting, are you like dragging it onto the character you're gonna hit, or you're just uh, yeah? It? I, I click target mode and then click on the uh, guy. Hmm. I don't know. One second. I'll try to target mode, target myself again. Well, not again, I wouldn't do it in the first place, but. Now I'm now untargeted. Or maybe I'm just doing <laughs> it so much, I'm hitting myself for Git as well. Yeah, you're just using one of those, uh. Double-edged uh, hammers. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm just gonna move in here. Then. Oh, one. That, that's going for Goji then. Bring it! And it's a miss. I am untouchable. Okay. Um, well, the thing's right here, so... Why don't I just... Why don't I just take a swing? That's definitely Damn. a hit. And you smack it down and kill it yeah. with your thunder stick. <laughs> yeah, thunder stick. That's a good name for it. <laughs> and um, vapor, from vapor rises. And up I can still the... move, right? Yes. Each square is ten feet until you reach the shore. Then it's five feet again. Okay. Um, is it going to tell me when I reach my maximum? I guess I just have to know, don't I? No. Uh, you have thirty. Damn, Frizden, you're getting huge, dude. What are you doing over there? <laughs> Activate okay, my so that would be 10, 20, 25, 30? Mm -hmm. Alright, that's where I'll... Um... 
that's where I'll hang out then. Okay. Um, that's my turn. Hi, Goji. Hey. How's it going? Meeting? I'm I'm feeling pretty chill. I'm swinging. Yeah, it's a swinging. Hey, I'm using my on. second ability, my not second ability, my second use of that cleric thing, or priest. I'm swinging again. Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, and you kill this <laughs> drow attacker. <laughs> Damn. No pity for your own kind. We are some damage dealing motherfuckers. No shit. Mm -hmm. The downside is I've used everything. <laughs> <laughs> I will pluck my dagger out of their corpse. That's the conclusion of combat then? Uh, yeah. You very solidly uh, killed it. And while you're picking up that dagger... I will go ahead and say that you each earn thirty-three XP. Uh, yes. What's one sixty-nine plus thirty-three? It'd be one ninety-nine, one two hundred one, two hundred two, right? About yeah, two hundred two. Yes. Um. Okay, and right, so as you're picking up your reclaimed dagger, you hear even more noise coming from the tunnel that is where uh -oh. they, your uh, accosters came from. But surprisingly, you also hear more noise much closer coming from the tunnel to your right on the same side of the creek. Um, wait, hang on, sorry. Tunnel before... to our right? Yeah. <laughs> uh... Futon, you're upside down on the on the top down <laughs> map. That's kind of funny. It, he's getting swirls in in the in the creek. Yeah. Uh okay, uh... sorry, so say again which directions are we hearing noise from? Hold on. And uh find but let's say from there. Yes. And where's the other sound coming from? The one directly south of you. That one. No, the other one. Darn it. Stupid. The, like, hallway-looking thing on it. Yeah. Oh, this one. Yeah. Ah, okay. I didn't... There was no red circle, so I just assumed there was nothing there. Got it. Okay, and anyway, as you're picking up the dagger, the closer entrance to you, from it appears more drow, but instead of surprisingly coming towards you as after a cursory glance at you they instead head towards the northern entrance and completely ignore you as more drow follow them hmm. as the ones that first came out exit into the northern tunnel you hear uh, more combat coming from that tunnel as you can assume these new drow engage whoever is in that tunnel. Oh, um, shit. From the southern tunnel, uh, the newer drow that came come out of it uh, face you and without any words to you, lift their cross crossbows and aim to you towards you, but not in an overt show of threat. Just it seems that they do not want you to proceed towards them or any further into these tunnels. Hmm. Uh, they continue to, in a way, keep guard over you without uh, progressing towards you as you hear combat continue towards the north of you. And... From behind these guards comes 
a unique looking drow of a much better attire than them. This drow is sleek in his wear, very prominent uh, glossed leathers of the black color with golden trim and wearing a very broad uh, broad brimmed hat which is odd considering you're underground and he is a very handsome drow with no hair visible at the top of his pate and he glances at you and gives a small little wink and gives a low, uh, low whistle to, towards the north, indicating whatever signal was necessary for the combat to be ended. And the drow up there start to return towards your cavern from where Brisdan is standing, he can see. Once they reach the entrance, they weave their hands, and you can see that the tunnel entrance of it begins to hit, uh, become loose, and the tunnel is closed down and entrance blocked by a controlled means of magic that they have available to them to not cause a cave-in but somehow close this tunnel. As that is happening, you can see that the guards are still watching you, making sure you do not approach. As they finish up, they return back to the, towards the tunnel that they came from, and they uh, return into it and start to do the exact same thing all the while the guards that were on you returning not having built the need to show any more threat and the lone drow in his uh, dapper attire is just watching you and finally once the tunnel entrance that they came from is ready to be collapsed as well he turns around and waves a hand towards you and exit out, get, exits the cavern following his compatriots and the cavern tunnel that they came from closes as well leaving no entrance after the um, cave-in of that tunnel uh, Bhutan, in your mind, you hear a uh, very monotone voice uh, saying the following. So that message only Putan heard. And mm. you are now free to do as you wish since the drow that came out are no longer there. Uh, on the body of the drow that you slew, you do find uh, 43 pieces of gold and a shield that is salvageable from his armor, uh, from his uh, pack. You also find uh, some arrows, should you need it, and his uh, chainmail looks kind of beat up. So if you wanted to like take it to sell, you could for like a few silver. Hmm. Um. Sorry, how much gold did you say? 43. <laughs> That's what I'm concerned about. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Goji will take... Uh, 
13 of the gold pieces and give 15 each to uh, Brisden and Futon. Okay, thank you. And then um, <clears throat> she doesn't have any particular interest in the shield or the beat up chain mail, unless if somebody else wants it, be my guest. Not a thing I have use. I'm already wearing chain mail and mine is better because I'm in it. There you go. <laughs> Um, okay, so I listened very attentively to your description of the tunnel being uh, closed slash collapsed magically, but I did not catch, I know you told us, but I did not catch which tunnel that was. Was that the northeast one or the east one? Both the northeast and, and the east one. They closed down the tunnel where your assailant came from as well as the tunnel that they came from. Okay, got it. So uh, the meaning behind... I'm sorry. What did it use to shoot Futon with? What did it use? The drow. The drow that we just killed, sorry. Oh, oh, uh, it just shot him with a uh, crossbow. So a Wizards small... Still around. Small bolt. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, actually. It's there. It wasn't beat up by your night of your uh, boomsticks. Wonderful. I would like to take. Go ahead. Yeah. Add it to your to your inventory. Cool. Oh, uh, what kind of crossbow is it? It's just a hand crossbow. I don't know if that's available in the, the module. If not, I can send you a picture of it, and you can put down the information. Um, no pincer. Okay, cool. Uh, with the hand crossbow, you find um, in his little mini coral uh, a set of of nine. Since oh no, eight a set of eight. And does it give you any information on special effects for that hand crossbow? No. So the bolts. Whenever you put them in as eight, they have a DC 13 constitution check for poisoning with a chance oh. of sleep if they fail five saving throws. Okay. Good work, Brisden. Thanks. So, you are now in this cavern, uh, lacking five... Uh, two of the five entrances, one of which you came out of, two of which uh, were caved in magically um, for whatever reason, you do not know, but speculating since one group decided to attack you immediately, and the other one just not outright ignored you, but did not interact with you directly. Uh, you can take the meaning of, of the actions as you wish. Uh, towards your northwest is where you came out of, and there are two passages uh, remaining otherwise, one towards your west and one towards your southwest. And uh, both ways seem like they would eventually turn towards the south anyway. So it's up to you which path you want to take. Hmm. Um, well, Goji's going to turn to Futon while Brisden is grabbing and uh, examining this crossbow and say, Futon, it looks like you heard something in your head that we couldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> or no, I mean, that's that's silly, but she's going to <laughs> she's going to see that he has an odd look on his face and ask him if everything's all right. I think I've gone insane. The good kind of insane? No, the one where you hear voices. Oh, that's, yeah. No, that's not good. What voice did you hear? No clue. What did they, did, did you hear what they said? Oh, yeah, I heard the words. What did they say? 
Come now, friends. This is not far enough. Keep going. There was work to do. So I've clearly got a friend in my head now. Hmm. Was it, do you know who, like, was it somebody that, was it one of the drow that we saw? I don't know. Hmm. Well, now you guys have the uh, option to, like, take a short rest if you wanted, or you can, like, try to patch yourself up, uh, or uh, yeah, go I think back a, the way you came. I think a rest to give uh, Futon some uh, some health back, and uh, Risden, mm -hmm. since he used pretty much every trick he had in the book. I don't think I got my stuff back on a uh, short rest, so... Oh I'm okay. yeah, you you would have to take Keep like on. an eight-hour nap. Okay, well let's take a short short rest just so you can recover some. There you go. There you go, buddy. Okay, and as you sit around, uh, just patching yourselves up, going wrapping up the uh, bandage, uh, bandage around your uh, mostly self-inflicted injuries <laughs> and ruminating on what just happened, why there's two groups of drow on opposition to your own and to themselves for some reason. Uh, you notice that the smell that you've been having of stagnant water is not increasing it's seeming to just reach a level of same as what you experienced in tunnels so maybe you've reached the location that that's stemming from hmm. um i did not mention anything about the the creek other than it being there but as you sit and recover you do actually notice that the water is odd because while this cavern that you're in is lit by patches of moss and mushroom given enough enough light to be able to see for some reason the water is kind of dark hmm um <clears throat> Goji's going to um, walk over to the edge s s like um, crouch down and just scoop up a handful of water and let it run out her hands like run through her fingers and just see if it has any kind of weird texture or anything it feels like normal water to you Anybody dare me to you drink see, it? You see that it is still the same dark color, but it just feels like normal water. Okay. And is Kristen it... balls his fist in an attempt to not dare Goji to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Resist. Um, to, be, to be clear, is it that the water itself is dark, or the water has some kind of, like, light canceling, like it's it's absorbing light that's what's making it dark or is it just dark murky water it is i would not say that it cancels out light it's just it's a very dark water hmm. it's to the point where it's not even apparently blue it's more black Okay, and is the which end of the stream is the source end? Is the water coming from the southern end or the northern end? The the water creek is going from now uh, north to south. Okay, and where it's coming out of the wall to the north, it's not like it's like a spring, right? It's not something we could like duck our head under and look, or is it? Uh, the top of the location where the southern part of the creek is is about one foot above the water so okay. you could try to look to see if you wanted to 
Yeah, I think assuming that the light level, or rather Goji's dark vision, is enough that she thinks she could actually, you know, get a good look, she'll she's not going to actually crawl up the creek any distance, but she'll crouch down and try to stick her head under into that one one foot high clearance above the water and just see what she can see. Uh, as you do so, you look, um, but all you can see is actual for the first time and darkness. There's no reflection from the water due to how black the water is and there is no um, available light from the foliage that you've been experiencing because of how close the water, the top of the, the ceiling of the, the roof yeah. of that section is. Um, even whatever lighting that you have from the cavern itself does not reach very far all you can tell is that the from the sense that you have on your face that there's a a small hint of a wind coming towards you and just stagnant stagnant water smell okay uh i believe i fixed it for you risen and uh, anything else um no i think uh goji's just gonna turn to futon and brisden and say this water is weird you guys <laughs> okay so you guys Sorry. have taken your short rest um so now you have options of either going back the way you came to try to see if you can find a way to break down the cavern walls or see down one of the new tunnels there, and there's nothing in this room to indicate which direction the path to dark lake continues is, is there uh you could take the hint of the direction of the water flow being in that dark lake is to the south. Okay. Sorry, I had an interruption. Uh, not to pull us back a second, but uh, Koji, weird, you're down. Oh, uh, it's yeah, it's just kind of like was in my voice. It's uh, the water's like uh, unnaturally dark. Do you guys get that feeling? Hmm. Like blackish. Uh, Prison will lean down and put a hand in the water. And I think it might be the, the source of uh, that weird smell we've been dealing with. You feel like it's normal water to you. And so we, we traversed the stream while we were in combat. There's nothing, the water hasn't done anything weird to like our boots or our leggings. It has or not. Nothing. Okay. Like, if you were to look down into the water, you could barely see the bottom, even though how shallow the, the creek bed is, due to the, how dark the water is. Hmm. Don't have a taste. <laughs> <laughs> okay! Do you taste it? Nice knowing you, Futon. Do you taste it? I me? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you wanted me to do it! <laughs> <laughs> It might just be minerals, oh. but it might not. Hmm. Tim, which way is uh, upstream of all the bloody, now dusty smoke corpse thing from the two <laughs> mains? Upstream is to your north. Okay. Goji, you owe me a bottle of ink. I will take my bottle of ink, pour it out, sort of move 180 from where I poured it out so I'm not just re-bottling now wet ink. ink. And I'll uh, fill that bottle with this stream's water. Hmm. How much does ink cost? Goji asked. Ten gold for this bottle. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Futon, you want to split it with me? Okay. Okay. I'm gonna give. <laughs> I'm gonna give Risden when he's out of the creek. I'm gonna give him five gold, and I'm gonna take it off my character sheet. Yeah. What a sweetie you two are. 
Got to be At fair. At least you're not losing out on ink, man. You can yeah. replace it now. Is there a character reason why you have ink? Out of I just character question? With it. Oh, okay. His background I, is I'm a, a sage. writer. Yeah. Oh. Well, not a writer. Like, I'm not an author. But yes, I do a lot of writing. Hmm. Like sketch comedy? <laughs> Mostly, yes. <laughs> with you two, I will have plenty of material. Plenty of material. <laughs> We could start a we could start a sketch comedy troupe, the three of us. Oh god. Who says it has to be run out of every time? Yeah, it's so weird. We're already in it. <laughs> no. If you ever took some time to like look at Frisden's equipment up and down, he's got plenty of scrolls and bullshit hmm. notes stuffed away in his backpack. Really wherever he could fit. Okay. Uh so you've stopped the guy who needs a sticky note for everything. You stoppered the uh, ink bottle, I take it? Yeah. Okay. Um, Gochi wants to take a look at... Let's take a look at the eastern passage that was closed down. The one um, where the newer drow came from? Yeah, where I'm, where I'm standing over there now. She's just going to kind of kick at the rubble a little bit, assuming that it is rubble and not, you know, just one giant rock or something. Um and just uh, try to get a feel for how thick of a blockage it might be. And uh, do you mind if I, like, what if I did, like, a roll, an insight roll, maybe, to see how how long she thinks it would take her to... Uh... Oh, guidance, thank you. How long she thinks it would take her to clear it, you know, if she was going to try. Give me... <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on. Uh, give me an investigation roll. Oh, oh, wait, I gave it to myself. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. No, wait, I have you targeted, though. Why did it give it to me? Uh -huh. Oh, wait, why does it say sell? Investigation. I don't have to do it myself. Great. Of course, my investigation is a negative two. Fantastic. Add yourself a d4. I don't know why I can't. Uh, okay, one second. Uh, Time to give it to you. D4 coming up. So that's a 13. Okay. So, <laughs> um, go back. What? Okay. Uh, so, from what you can see, you can tell that the magic that they used made it so a big piece of rock was lodged into the cavern entrance, uh, the tunnel entrance, with a bunch of rubble around it. Uh, with your investigation of 13, you can tell that uh, you're not going to get through it anytime soon okay. since you do not have the uh, mining equipment to either hit, uh, tunnel through this big slab of rock anytime soon. Okay, so not something that we could just, you know, push and kick and five minutes later no. we'd have a traversable path. Okay. Um, no, they, they purposely made it so it would not be easy to get through it. Okay. Would it be reasonable that Goji could walk up to the northeast passage and with one quick glance get the same feel, or at least be able to tell if this is different for, uh, somehow? Uh, you can tell that it would be as difficult, if not more so, <laughs> difficult to get through that tunnel entrance. Okay. <laughs> Probably because they did not want whoever was pursuing you to go through that tunnel. Anymore. Got it. So it wasn't that this was this was no accident. This was a clearly planned keep them from coming this way obstruction thing. This is you all out of out so, of character. Yeah. I'm saying this. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Well, uh, Goji's going to illuminate um, Futon, who's still upside down. <laughs> He must have got bit by one of those bats. Um, I'm back now. He's a monk. He's like doing <laughs> acrobatics practice or something. Futon and Brisden. I'm, I'm just. Uh, I'm letting you two know the. Uh, those tunnels are. I don't know much about blocking off tunnels, but they look pretty thoroughly blocked off. It would take us a long time to try to dig through those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brisden walks into it, and you just hear like the sound in a Pokemon game when you walk into a wall. Um, 
So just to remind myself, there's an exit to the south, that's that red circle. There's the exit to the northwest we came in, and is there an exit to the west as well? Yes, and when you look to the west one, you can see that it's uh, curving towards the south as well. Presumably, it is just a natural offshoot that still follows some old uh, carving by water that leads further south. Okay. I guess that's what... If you want to go to the lake, we go that way. Well, either that or to the south, because that's the way the stream is flowing. And that, but that way went south as well. So it could be either. Yeah. If we look in the southern uh, exit, can we tell at a distance what direction it continues on in, or is it still going south? It still goes south. It's just a. Uh, it, it's on a more slope downwards. Um, vision but it just goes south mm. hmm what do you guys think I'm voting either south or west I don't think we gain anything by going back the direction we came <laughs> that's fair that's fair <laughs> I mean, he can only get risen wet so many times. Mm -hmm. He's a naturally very dry individual. Wit and uh, <laughs> bodily condition. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't put down, so I'll, I'll walk on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that, by the way? How did you turn your... I don't remember. Um... Ifton wheel. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Control is size. Control is size, okay. Jesus! <laughs> That's a really high resolution image. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like you did it you yourself see... or something. You can see his pores. His pores. Yeah. <laughs> need to start using more lotion, dude. Mm. Like I said, dry. <laughs> <laughs> Complexion, wit, clothing. Okay. Um, it sounds like uh, it sounds like nobody has any strong feelings about which direction we go. Goji's asking the group. No. Mm -hmm. West. Should we flip a coin? I would just say you go west. West it is. Let's and go so west. Your group, uh, gathers up after one uh, hops and skips across the little creek to avoid as much wet damage as possible. Mm -hmm. Another one decides yeah. to pull out his inner Spider-Man and crosses through the ceiling. <laughs> and Goji with uh, the little uh, Thunderstick uh, shakes their head, goes off to the west. Okay, I think um, Goji's f comfortable being in the lead, provided that uh, Vrizden, whose dark vision is um, uh, uh, has a greater view distance than hers, uh, provided he's you know close by, so he can warn her if something is beyond the periphery of her vision that he can actually see. Did, did that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Sure. <laughs> I think it makes sense. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So you you proceed down the tunnel. Uh, as your previous uh veils, um, <laughs> it's just as uh, uh lit as um before, with patches of moss uh lighting your way. Uh, the only real difference being more mushrooms than than before uh not massive ones just more interspersed amongst the moss you can see that mushrooms are increasing in number and giving off their own bioluminescence and the tunnel does turn southward 
and it starts to weave more bends and turns and sometimes going east, sometimes going west, but it always turns back down south, uh, sloping downwards from the previous uh, upward trail that you were having before. And you can tell that as you progress through the cavern floor is smoother than what you've experienced, uh, presumably because of water uh, having been previously uh, gone through and made this tunnel and in its progress downwards. Uh, finally, after some couple hours of traversing down this tunnel, you finally see a uh, brighter light up ahead of you and you exit out into a brand new cave uh, one that's not even close to the same scope of what you've experienced so far this cave is extremely massive in size you can look out from it and see not even the other side of the cave Sweet. so far away is the distance and as your eyes adjust to this new um, light level you begin to tell very odd uh, vision first of all you do notice that the amount of light level is vastly increased because there's a much larger amount of sources of light you also see that the light is coming to, to you in different hues of colors due to the moss and mushrooms throughout the cave being of different um ecologies of that the the moss and mushroom and um <laughs> the biggest source of light surprisingly is the roof of the cave which is above you at the hi hi highest point 100 feet and across the entirety of the cave is just a huge blanket of moss uh Probably because of how much humidity and uh, ambient uh, nutrients that there is throughout the cave, allowing so much growth to be possible in this massive cave. And due to this light, you can see that the cave is not just across from you large. It is both to your west and east as well you can even assume that it's probably more than a mile long because you cannot even see the cave walls outside of where immediately you are uh, you can also see that directly in front of you is a massive lake of just black <gasps> there is no other color but black for this water that you are looking at and in this odd uh, picture of night there are actually islands interspersed through them given actual color of greens and browns and blues in odd locations considering your own past experience of what a lake should look like and you can see that there are a varied amount of islands and as your eyes further adjust and look closer towards the shore of this black dark lake you see that there are um little settlements along the lake shore as you look down uh, uh, across the cavern you even see close to you a little dock like thing and you also uh, bear 
witness to multiple creatures throughout the the range of your vision. And when I say that, I don't mean dark vision, normal vision, as you cannot see uh, the other side uh, of the cave. But you do see that there are like creatures like crocodiles along the, the beach edge. Crocodiles? Uh, oh, no. Oh, yeah, there are crocodiles. <laughs> you can also see humanoid creatures um, amongst some of the islands. And you also see flying creatures that somehow manage to uh, create enough buoyancy to be able to flap their wings along this kind of dead air. And I think this would be a good spot for us to take a break, okay. considering the time. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I couldn't tell you why. But if you had said that there were, like, giant spiders walking along the edge of the lake, I'd have been like, oh, okay, giant spiders. When you said crocodiles, my brain was like, those are the top five scariest things in the real world. And it just, it like, the, the shock of having a real, actual creature down here that's going to be terrifying to have to deal with. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know why it shocked me, but it did. <laughs> cool for us, yeah. You'd argue about the spiders. <laughs> so, I don't know if my description was not enough. It's just, th this is a very big cavern and all that, and I don't know where to cut it off without yeah. you guys actually deciding where do you want to actually look. But, like I said, you can see a bunch of islands. There's this big black lake, um, and you see a bunch of creatures. You can't see the other side of the cavern. Um, other than can't see the walls other than the roof above you and the walls splintering off from the tunnel entrance. so okay. we can decide what you guys are going to do with all that information when you come back okay sounds good um you guys want to come back in like 15 minutes 10 minutes what sounds sure good do. um yeah that sounds good yeah, 10? I'm not doing anything, so 10, 15 okay. is good for me. All right, I'll be back in 10 then. Still fucking around, or are we ready to go? Uh, that depends on everybody being settled with their dice or not. I love fucking around. I'm going to keep playing with them. <laughs> but I can play while I, while I do this. Okay. Uh, I seem I'll to have fixed my... Free. I seem to have fixed my music issue as well, if anybody cares. Oh, it was fixed. Yeah, I thought it was fixed at the start. No, Windows Media Player was being a B-I-T-C-H, so I downloaded VLC. I thought I had VLC downloaded a long time ago, but I must have must have cleared it or something. <clears throat> but now I've got shortcuts for playlists for all kinds of things. I can, at a moment's notice, switch them up. Oh, so I need to figure out some way to pick you up so you don't have the right situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Okay. Um, before we, uh, progress with how you guys decide to handle this massive cave, um, I've been thinking over the past few weeks, considering that we play a shorter amount of time than what is normally, um, required mm -hmm. for a tabletop session, I, okay. Um, I've decided that I'm going to start giving a fair boost of XP on, let's just call them milestones. Okay. Such as you guys entering Dark Lake at last. And I will also give you guys partial XP for either avoided combat or somehow changing what was more likely going to be a combat thing into like a role playing session yeah. thing. So we would like talk our way out of something or negotiate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Speech level 100. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. That way you guys can get 
more XP, uh, blow up faster, and since I, I don't know how long <laughs> this uh, <laughs> section, uh, Act 1 is going to take, but since we only do usually about two and a half hours, um, it'll be easier for you guys to progress to have this increased amount of XP. Okay. Um, uh, really quick, just some, while you're talking about um, uh, logistics and all that, um, I would be fine, it's up to you guys, but I'd be fine going from, th we could start an hour earlier and go for four hours, uh, but I know that that's a more of a constraint on people's schedules, so I don't want to make it sound like we have to do that, but it's an option. The other thing I was going to say is our next session would be the weekend of the 6th and 7th of July, and I will be out of town for the 4th uh, for that weekend, so I won't be able to play that weekend. So then, but our next play session at the weekend of July 20th and 21st. Does that sound good to everybody? Let yep. me check. As for the time thing, I think that was more of an Adam yeah you would need to discuss yeah okay back sorry one more time Pam. um i was gonna say uh the next weekend that we would normally play would be the weekend of the 6th and 7th but with the 4th of july holiday i'll be out of town that weekend um so our next session on our regular first and third saturday schedule would be saturday the 20th of july mm -hmm. if that works for everybody then that's what we'll plan on oh yeah Okay. I think even if I didn't, even if I wasn't traveling, it'd probably be a good idea to take the weekend of after 4th of July off just because everybody's going to have stuff going on, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, not yeah. me. Not us nerds. Thanks, Pam. <laughs> I'm staying home. <laughs> Uh, but that's not a real yeah, nerd. Sure. Oh, yeah, but you're not like, there's no, no, no plans to like go out and, you know, grill something or. I don't know, walking uh, around a park do or something. something here, but... No. Thanks for social. I'm overestimating how cool you guys are, I guess. <laughs> I go on regular walks with my awesome dog, Bank. <laughs> I don't, need, an, yeah, I don't I can... need a holiday to give me a permission. <laughs> I can guarantee you, outside of online groups, I've never been in part of the cool kids. I mean... I'd, I'd be very surprised if any of us had been, but... Oh, I was swagged out in high school. Really? Oh, yeah. You were a cool kid? Yeah, I was wearing bell bottoms and everything. Damn. So, just to, not that you guys know who any of these people are, but it's just an interesting little thing to me. Uh, so, when I was in high school, I had my cousin Amy. She, she and I have the same age. Oh, she, yeah, I'm great with Amy. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She's really nice. She's a, nice, I flip it, you she's a very nice person. Um... She was the cool kid, and I was the dweeb. We didn't go to the same school, but our students in each of our schools knew of the other. Like she, they, People knew that she was my cousin, all that stuff. I was the dweeb. She was the cool kid. And now we each have kids who are entering high school. Mm -hmm. And my kids are way freaking cooler than I ever was when I was a kid. And her kid, her oldest daughter, Margaret, is like kind of an outcast, kind of a dweeb, has you know trouble with kids bullying and stuff like that. And I... Every time I talk to Annie, I'm like, how did this happen? We're like, I got the cool kids and you got the dweeby kid. Just a weird generational flip. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Adam, um, while you were gone, I was saying we're going to be getting um, milestone XP and avoid combat XP. Uh to help us progress a bit faster considering our shown uh, play times uh, we will not be meeting on the 6th of July due to uh, schedules so the next session will potentially be the 20th of July uh, Pem brought up that if we wanted to we could either start playing an hour earlier than our normal times and do a four hour thing or an hour after do four hours that way um, so I think that's something that we can decide on discord later on uh, depending on um, how you how you judge your own schedule to be 
In two weeks, it's the 29th. Yeah, but we only do the first and third Saturdays, so we wouldn't be doing the fifth Saturday. Oh, oh, to me, it's every two weeks. Nope. We've been doing first and third. Because I think, uh, I don't remember if it was with Max's campaign, but we did have a, a previous month where the Saturdays flipped because we had three Saturdays in one month and we ended up... Anyway, the reason I noticed it is because I have my kids every other weekend. And so we've I know we've previously switched from having sessions on weekends where I didn't have them to having them on weekends where I did have them. Okay. Because I think we flipped one with a month with five Saturdays, but... Okay, so um, as far as the whole scheduling thing uh, or um, extending our times, we can figure that out. D decide yeah. that on Discord. Tabled for now. Uh, okay, so as far as the XP, I will say since you guys finally reached Dark Lake, <laughs> finally, you, you each get um, 50 XP, and in the note of avoiding combat considering you ran away like a bunch of chickens from a mushroom <laughs> you get 10 xp from that so 60 new xp to each okay of you. i'm at 262 is that what you guys are at mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. oh boy i'm curious to see what leveling up in this fantasy ground system is like yeah it shouldn't be that difficult from my own experience. If I don't get a fanfare sound effect, I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> I don't know about the tales of listening. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, giant, giant cavern we can't see the other side of, and settlements along the waterfront, a dock, and even crocodiles. This is going to be a blast. Mm -hmm. Um out of character, I'm fucking terrified of encountering any crocodiles, but in character, Goji would be amped to fight a crocodile. <laughs> First is interested in crocodile meat. Crocodile meat is good. I wouldn't know. Yet. <laughs> We're gonna Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a new goal, guys. There's a new quest. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed to escape the Underdark until we've all dined on crocodile meat. Horrible <laughs> monsters we could find. I'm going back for that mushroom, as a matter of fact. Okay? We're going to have a nice mushroom Oh, man. Soup. That would be really good. Yeah. I think I've actually had that'd crocodile. Be a, that'd be a fun, motivating action for a party, is they're not after glory or loot. They just want to eat whatever they can kill. <laughs> Have you uh, seen the the new show? I think on Netflix, Delicious in Dungeon. Mm -mm. Yes, I've seen it's three exactly episodes, that. and I want to watch seen more, the first. but I don't have it anymore. Yeah, I'm waiting to watch it with my boyfriend. But mm. it's it's exactly that, Pam. That's what I was thinking when you guys were talking about, dude. That show is so awesome. Yeah, a mega poor D and D party can't afford food for their adventure, so, so they just go they around just eat whatever they find. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You'd have to be very careful where you where you adventured because large chunks of your adventure you could end up being cannibals if you're you know fighting in a town or something like that. Yeah. Everything's free game when you're going for survival. Man. True. And who's gonna mm. know? Who's gonna tell them? I know. Do, do prions know? exist in the Forgotten Realms? Do Can you what? Get prions? They're like these weird little. They're little. Um, microscopic Brain. organisms that you can get when you eat when you eat meat of your own species it can create prions which can cause like brain damage and shit yeah. um, um, they exist I, I but they're would, not cross racial yeah. so I would say that you don't <laughs> <laughs> should you be telling that the orc right now alright so if we see well, any can eat the orc right if we back. see any gnomes down here <laughs> yeah they're fair game they're fair game no yep. one to spit <laughs> You can use their hat to keep the rotation even. <laughs> Very handy. <laughs> no one has spit. <laughs> oh, I've heard worse food. 
Prince Albert Cross is based on like this sort of fantasy. There might be cannibal races because the Bosma can eat. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. True, yeah. In D and D, there's lizard folk will uh, eat whatever's around. Yeah, yeah. I think in one of the books, there's like a whole list of you know like traits you could roll for, like just random quirks, uh, personality quirks. Mm -hmm. I think for the lizard folk, one of them is like, I always keep spare fingers around if I'm ever hungry on the road. <laughs> Seems jerky fingers. Jerked man, fingers. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So you guys are looking down on this lake. Uh, to your out of character knowledge, nor uh, is where you're currently at on the cave wall. You're on yeah. the north wall. Of. Uh, like I said, you can't see the opposite walls. Um, you see a massive dark lake with islands pocketing it. Um, some larger than others. You see different varieties of wildlife from big old crocodiles to flying creatures. You also see humanoids. And when you're trying to peer into the dark lake itself, you don't see any kind of um, aquatic creature from your vantage you don't know if it means that there is no aquatic creatures or you just can't see them due to mm. the color of the lake the crocodiles uh, have to eat something i'm sorry say that again the crocodiles have to eat something yeah yeah they, they have to eat something unless it's gnomes on a spit on <laughs> there's just uh, there's just no the crocodiles have spits that they skewer the gnomes with. Yeah. They, they, heat them they on got like some underground volcanic vents. Yeah. yeah, they got them really um, handy tails, man. So from from where we're at, the nearest settlement is like how far away from us? Uh, the nearest settlement that you can see is a good. Six, seven hundred feet away. Okay. Can we, like, from this distance, can we tell, like, roughly how many buildings it is? Is it just a, a tiny village? Is it something more like it, a It's town? just a tiny, tiny little village okay. of, uh, of shacks. There's, you can barely even call that a fence on it from what you can see. Okay. And is it, uh, can we see if there's anybody milling about? Are they gnomish? Are they Jurgar, Dwergar, whatever the hell they're called? Uh, from from where you are, you can see that there are humanoids, but not close enough to mm. see um, what that humanoid is. Okay. And you can also see that there is a little dock-like thing, um, not close to you, but more towards your uh, southeast, and. Uh, there's that. You also see settlements amongst the island, mm. and as they say, the cave's your oyster. Is the dock near one of those settlements, or is it just kind of on its own? Uh, it's on its own. Okay. The settlement that you were asking about is towards your west, okay. while the dock is towards your southeast. And we don't see any craft moored at the dock? No. There is no craft there. Okay. <clears throat> um, what do you guys think? Do you think we approach one of these settlements and ask them some questions? Andrew? I mean, otherwise, sure. we, I think maybe we just start walking the perimeter of the space would be my only other thought and see what's around. Well, if they're peaceful, well, they'll be able to help with that. And if they're not, we get XP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Goji's going to strike out, uh, assuming that she's going to be, you know, she's got company coming with her. She's going to strike out in the direction of that settlement you said was six or 700 feet away near the shore. And we're, we're, uh, Goji's confirming this with her companions. We are confident this is Dark Lake, yes? Yeah. Yeah. It's a lake that's dark have to be a, what else could it possibly yeah. be coincidence if there was another dark lake around yes yeah, could be dimly and that's darker one for everyone 
<laughs> off-white lake. Shadowy, but not like completely covered. Yeah. Hey, you know what? In the Underdark, they may need distinctions that that fine, I imagine. There's probably lots of dark lakes down here. I mean, if you look on the other side of the map that you see, there's probably a dim lake somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. So, you all head off towards the... Uh, calling it a settlement is a little much. It's more like a a very small gathering. Shanty town? Yeah. Yeah. And with a small little little fence. That's not really gonna stop anything. More like yeah. we're gonna put this here so that we can claim this spot. Do they have this is just I guess some, you know, flavor. It doesn't it's not really important. But do they have like um are they gardening anything down here or is it clear that they're fishing or like what's their uh, it's food source? As you approach well, as you approach the uh, little gathering of shacks, uh, you see that there are stands for um, drying fish. Hmm. And as you approach, you do see that from, from the uh, closest uh, shack that you are approaching, there is a figure leaning on the shack watching his fish dry and as he turns to you you see that it is actually a goblin oh hey i speak goblin <laughs> okay uh, uh we're, we're, as soon as we see this goblin as soon as goji can tell that's what it is she stops approaching and um she calls out to the goblin the following Sorry, did you say something, Mike? You cut out. No, I was just laughing at how you <laughs> greeted it with boy. Mm -hmm. And as they say that, they express it in such a way where you get the impression that they fully mean that is their uh their town okay i'm gonna translate Even, for no it's and just a, just a little gathering of chat S says it's their town okay we could guess that Uh, what else do we want to ask him? <laughs> um, oh, they're talking at us. He's asking where we <laughs> come from. Wow. Uh, um, I don't know anything about Underdark Goblins. So I don't know if we should save the circus or not. I said above ground. We met some. Okay. We met some jerk drow. This is this is great. I love this. <laughs> True, Tom. You think they're talking shit? I think they're talking shit. We're talking shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he said me me calling him. I told him his town sucked earlier. Uh, when, he, when he said it was his town, I said your town sucks. And then he said you're, that's not very neighborly of you. And I said I'm not your neighbor, mate. <laughs> they're not talking shit. You're talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get us in trouble. <laughs> When you said they're talking shit, I assumed you meant both me and him. Yeah, I'm assuming I it's a him. It I, I've all of you. I have assumed that gender. Was just you. Yeah, it's just me.
He tells uh, he told me we should we should go eat each other in another neighborhood. This has gotten weirdly sexual. <laughs> <laughs> he called us cannibal. He called me a cannibal. Um, <laughs> oh, he knows. <laughs> I'm asking him if he's seen any drow recently. He's probably not going to help me now. Oh. <laughs> he's very literal, this guy. I said, you've seen any drow re recently? He said, yeah, your mate, meaning Brisden. He says he's the leader of this town, which, I mean, okay. Such as it is. He says there's other goblins out on the lake at the moment. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, d -d 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 there's a way to type in character actions right i forget what that is yeah type what you want and then you press what is it control for act alt for out of character and then control shift for like what i did earlier where i said i was sitting down oh jesus okay that was that was way more complicated than i was thinking it would be sorry i'll give examples yep normal Holding control, okay. Shift doesn't do anything. Okay. Okay, I tossed him a gold piece to as a way to say thank you and sorry for treating him like he was a jerk right off the bat. He basically told us that it's just him and a few other goblins that live in this town, and the other goblins are out on the lake, presumably fishing. Shift makes you shout! <laughs> uh, oh, he liked the gold piece. He said uh, his tra translation was, Thanks, neighbor. Try checking with Kuotoa at the dock. So I propose we uh, head for the dock next. Yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they are fishmen, aren't they? I remember them from um, Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, I'm sorry. You were asking. Yes, they are fish. I was stating. Oh. Brisden's come. Well, Frisden is making an assumption, and he's a convent individual. <laughs> he very well could have been a goblin named Kuotoa. Frisden would have been. Frisden's got that, the... got that oh. under, under dark knowledge. Um... <clears throat> Okay, uh, well, yeah, Goji's, uh, in case I didn't translate all of that conversation for you, Goji's going to get Futon and Brisden up to speed. Um, it's just a small settlement of goblins here. The rest of them are out in the lake. He recommended we can maybe get other information from the Kuotoa at the dock. So why don't we walk down to the dock and check it out? Uh, okay. While you're talking to your friends, the goblin, uh, not... In the actual uh, meaning of the word, but sneakily puts away the, the gold piece that you gave him in a some place uh, under his little shack, so that potentially no others find out that he got mm, paid. I see. And yeah, so you guys are going towards the dock. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Out of character moment. If I was playing Spank Badger right now, I would definitely come back and try to rob that dude's gold wherever he stashed it. 
Yeah, that's definitely not very neighborly at all. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, let's march toward that dock. Okay. Uh, you all turn around and head eastward along the lake, and as you progress, you notice that the the beach side is uh kind of like any other kind of normal beach that you would find along a lake. Uh, not so sandy as you would find in a seaside beach, more more pebble strewn, firmer of of terrain. So it won't be so easy for you to slip should you ever find yourselves in a fight along the edge of the lake. Is the water you... still, or is it kind of lapping at the shore? Like what? Uh... Um, there is some minor lapping, and when it does, it very briefly becomes clear as it goes over the uh, sand mixture, but it always returns back to the lake as black. And again, as you peer into the lake, you still cannot see any kind of um, creatures underneath the lake edge. I mean, the, the water's edge. And the water is the same dark, dark consistency as that creek that we were in in a previous room, right? Correct. You could even say it's even darker considering the amount of water that there is now. Yeah. Are we still dealing with the same type of smell that we had when we were around that creek? Yeah. I mean, now it's more like mixed in with uh, with the normal foliage uh, okay. and fauna uh, smells that you would find, considering that there's actually living um, groups and, and settlements in this area mixed okay. in, but the stagnant water smell is prevalent. Hmm. Okay. Um, as we're approaching the dock, can we see anyone on it or near it? Uh, you do not see anyone or anything at the dock, but as you approach the dock, you do see that there seems to be like some kind of stand at the dock with some kind of pulling me mechanism. Hmm. Uh, as you approach the dock, you you bear witness to this mechanism, and it seems to be where if you pull on it, kind of string underneath the mechanism is pulled, and seems to run underneath the dock. Hmm. Okay. Um... Assuming that um, uh, uh, Risden and Futon don't do something else first, um, Gochi's going to see if she can poke her head under the dock and see where that line leads. Okay. Uh, the, the dock itself is only partially into the beach side. Not that far, maybe a couple feet. The rest of it goes into the actual dark lake and there's not that much of a height difference from the bottom of the dock to the lakeside, the, 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 the water's edge. Um, and when you look, you can see that the string goes into the lake itself and seems to go in an angle to where it goes further into the lake into some kind of location and since you can't see into the the water itself you cannot determine anything past that hmm. nothing else here at the dock no you know like there's there's not signs that somebody's been here recently there are signs that there's been recent uh activity you can see uh scuff marks on the wood and you can also see that there is no not much um sand and dust hinting that uh at least most of the dock is used for whatever containers or passengers 
people are using it. Hmm. You guys think we should tug on this line? Yeah. We got like a doorbell. Hmm. Sure. Okay. Goji's going to look at Risden and Futon, and if neither of them make a move in about five seconds or so, she's going to loudly sigh to herself and then tug the line herself. Uh, when you tug the line, you very, very, very faintly, <laughs> very faintly hear a time like um, noise emanating from below you and felt the the uh, quiver of the mechanism under your hand uh, accompany that noise and it seems like that chime is coming from the water's edge itself hmm. okay um, I'm gonna take a step back and just watch and see what happens <laughs> sure uh okay and there is a very slight uh rippling from underneath the the dock from what you can assume due to the board having been moved and, and after that uh, nothing else happened hmm Okay. Um, and when I pulled the line, it, it created this phenomenon we just experienced, but it's it's definitely fixed to something out in the water. This isn't a line I can just pull. I couldn't pull it onto the shore. Like It, I'm, I'm, uh, it doesn't feel like yeah. a fishing line, for example. It, it seemed like... When, oh, okay. Uh, give me an investigation roll. Oh boy, this is what I'm bad at. Investigation. Okay, one second. Let me make sure I grab the right one here. Here we go. Oh yeah. With with that, I will say that you are pretty confident that your action with the mechanism produced the effect it was intended to. Hmm. Okay, so maybe if we sit and wait, something will respond to that um, chime that we initiated, or is nothing happening still? Uh, if you're asking after like a minute, nothing's yeah. happened yet. We're again, they would not have heard it the first time. Okay. Letting her rip. I'm going to pull it again. You pull it again, and the exact same effect of uh, tension through the mechanism happens under your hand, and the same faint chime is heard by all of you from beneath you. Otherwise, nothing seems to happen? No. Uh, Tanum, I'm gonna walk to the edge of the dock, and I'm gonna cast Dancing Lights, and have the four balls of light just go barely beneath the surface, see if I could still see them. Uh, Meanwhile, you, you do cast that, but the water does not change. Goji, meanwhile, has, I can't like, see him, like, sorry, even ahead. inkily under the uh, surface at all. Sorry, man. Uh, no. The... Okay. Um, do you want to give some kind of role to try to interpret that or no? Um, no, I don't think uh, Risden's gonna <laughs> check through that too much. It is concentration, so if it like ended the spell, I guess he no, it does not. That. It does not end the spell. Okay. It just doesn't affect what you see. Hmm. All right, he will. You still, he will end you, the spell. You, you casted the dancing lights and you can still see black water only. Okay. 
Goji has moved about six steps away from the dock and she's um, facing away from it. She's facing away from the group and she's clearly like muttering to herself like she's uh, uh, aggravated and trying to calm herself down. Okay. Uh, now you either have the option to continue on traveling down the beaches or just wait to see if something happens. Do you want to talk to her, Futon, or should I? <laughs> I, I happen to not like being punched in the face, but you've taken your fair share today. So. <laughs> Maybe you've built up an immunity to getting punched in the face. <laughs> yes, bro. It's like well, a vaccine. You're more dexterous than I am. Mm. If she turns quickly, just dodge. She'll be all right. She just needs a she just needs a minute or so. She'll she'll have her wits about her again here in a second. Okay. She just very easily gets aggravated. Okay. So you did wait a couple of minutes. Yeah, I'll say we just, did. Okay. After a couple minutes, um, is anybody looking out towards the lake? Goji's not. Yeah, wh what's the dock set up here? Is it like, you know, little it's wooden just, posts holding it up it, and stuff like that? Yeah, it's just little wooden posts that's holding okay, it up. Yeah. Just, you can only be sat on one of those posts until uh, Goji rejoins with us. Okay, and you said you were looking out towards the lake? Yeah, I mean, not like, you know, not attentively, but he's not going to put it towards his back. That okay. gives him the feeling of, like, being lost at sea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As you are contemptively uh, gazing out to sea, your eyes out of focus, um, your eyes just, like, skimming along the, the water's edge, glancing at each island that you can see, you start to notice towards the right side of your vision that there's actually a, a kind of figure coming into focus and as you notice that you turn, turn to it and you see a little vessel becoming larger and heading towards your direction hmm. uh, I will alert Futon of that and Goji as well depending on how uh far away she is if she's rejoining us about this time yeah goji's uh she's collected herself she's coming back to the dock to see if anything's changed okay yeah uh, risen will give like a little whistle to get everyone's attention and then point okay okay uh, as you all notice that this uh little vessel is coming closer it continues to come closer you can see that it came from a fair distance considering how far away it is and as it becomes uh more evident it is a little little fairy looking vessel and upon it is a fish like looking creature steering the vessel And after, let's say, 50 minutes, it comes close enough to finally be able to uh, dock the ferry vessel on the dock. And the creature waves its hand all jubilantly towards you and exclaims, If this fish man doesn't speak common, I will laugh. <laughs> <laughs> if none of us can understand him after all this. Uh, well, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out how I want to address. Um... I'm going to imagine his voice is like Admiral Akbar's. Ah, oh, shit. Who understands that? <laughs> Brisden? Yeah. 
Yeah, I got it. He just says hello. Oh. Koji's just gonna kind of pace around while she listens to them speaking another language. He's, he's giving me very strong Legend of Zelda NPC vibes. <laughs> very abrasive personality. He's too happy. There's a single exclamation point in there. It's setting me off. Oh, no, there's two. There's two so far. He's excited. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like uh, listening to an anthropologist or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Now, here we have <laughs> an underdark farrier. Like many of them, he is a fish man himself. This one's excited. <laughs> <laughs> you just switched to Steve Irwin there. <laughs> Crikey, look at this fella. <laughs> oh, he's hungry, isn't he? Uh, he just he said thank you for calling on the fi uh, ferry service. I almost called it the fish service. <laughs> if either of you want to be serviced by a fish, do so now. Then we can get moving. I mean, it, it's always an option. It's just not presented. That would take right. one hell of a persuasion <laughs> roll, I think. <laughs> not not for me to convince him. For the fish to convince me, I think it would need to be a pretty impressive roll. Hey, so you you two are still conversing? Oh, okay. I'm Radius sorry. It's just it's, I'm just trying to type it up. Yeah, no, it's fine. You can take your time. This is this is one of the best features of this uh, system. I so. genuinely love doing this. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I think... could do a whole campaign that's just talking because yeah. of this. Yeah, that's why I was like trying to uh, figure out how I wanted to do this, and I'm thinking that for voices, I'm gonna be able to do not as badly because i'll be able to use these languages use the chat that... yeah it's clever He's telling his life story. <laughs> he is so excited. <laughs> <laughs> he just loves his this job. Is how he makes his living, man. He loves his job. <laughs> Three sentences, eight exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> it wears quickly on Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is great. I love that Max can be like, oh man, look how excited he is. And meanwhile, his character is like, okay, you've got about two seconds before I get sick of this shit. camp that's uh, that's separate from the village we were at i take it yeah 
Yeah, uh, he goes three places here where we are his, currently. Yeah. And then the two things. Like his that. home and the Goblin War Camp, okay. He says, our currently home, so I don't know. So maybe there's a yeah, Quotoa village out there somewhere? Yeah, maybe. Um, well, Goblin War Camp doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, he he added that he, for a small further fee, provides meal with a lukewarm beer. I and then I can't imagine that that's any good down here. But okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Brisden perks up when he relays this part. And then he asked me to not kill him, so. <laughs> Seems he understands the role. <laughs> Does this guy know that he's in a D&D &D campaign? Is he, is, he, is he breaking the fourth wall? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. The last thing he said, I don't think Brisden would translate this. For comic effect, I think it's worth it. He says, I know this one's joy can cause distress. <laughs> well, so yes, no, I think the, he might know. <laughs> no, the thing is that Kuatoa are automatically usually killed by drow. Yeah, oh, I figured. Because he, oh. he said, um, of course, friend Dark Elf. Please don't, just please don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I, I told him I wouldn't at this particular moment. This is great. I love this guy. It's just funny that, that it. it's funny that he's he is the gatekeeper for wherever we're going to go next and he's like, oh, "By the way, <laughs> whatever you end don't up deciding, me. please don't kill me." <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, okay, is the conversation, do you feel like it's concluded? He's told us what uh, he's going to tell us? Yes, I, I asked him to hold for a minute while we speak. Okay, got it. Um, all right, well, I imagine if we go to whoever our village is, his hour, um, it's just going to be more fish guys, right? Okay. Uh, that sounds likely. So we're probably going to have similarly frustrating conversations there and maybe not learn too much should we just go to the goblin war camp and see why they have a war camp could do yeah you could take over speaking with them yeah i, I mean it's up to, it's up to you guys i i'm i'm just thinking out loud but uh, i don't feel like i have a great idea necessarily so if somebody feels well, like they have a better plan now that we have kind of a moment to breathe here what exactly is our goal my good new friends are we just getting back <laughs> to the surface good, or uh, good question are we planning to uh, attempt an escape for all the other people who are presumably killed um, or are we intending to simply integrate into underdark society <laughs> just live the rest of our days down here <laughs> i mean it's not much different from what we'd probably be doing that's on the surface probably, right? adventuring killing that's probably true we could just go help that goblin dry his fish yeah um I think, uh, I mean, Goji's, Goji's innate character would prevent her from ever um, accepting Underdark life as anything uh, she could tolerate. Not because it'd be underground and dark, but because it would mean that she would not be able to cultivate this sense of destiny that she has. That she's going to be known as a famous fighting orc on the surface. So... Um, She's definitely planning to get above ground. I think 
her feelings about the other slaves that we encountered. She's probably relatively indifferent if <laughs> yes, if we come across a means of rescuing anybody being persecuted by the drow that aligns with our um, <laughs> survival, she would be for it. If we come across, if we're able to get the fuck out of here and solve this mystery without saving, she's, yeah, she's basically like Abraham Lincoln, right? If I can free the slaves and win the war, great. If I can win the <laughs> war and not free the slaves, that's fine too. Uh -huh. Um, I think her main goal is get above ground and if she can help it, maybe kick the shit out of the people that put us here in the first place. That sounds ideal to me. If nothing else, if we can talk to these goblins, maybe we have some, uh, if it's a truly a war camp, maybe they're gearing up for war against, I don't know, drow, maybe? The same jerk drow that we were dealing with upstairs. Futon misses fresh wind. Okay, I'm no, I'm sorry, I'm catching up with the chat here the, because the I was Kula talking. Kulatoa flinches at your gaze, but he still has this upbeat kind of feeling emanate him off of, off of him. Uh... Okay, so it sounds like the consensus is we're all pretty self-interested. Yeah, nobody's got a real abolitionist bone in their body this is out of character yep okay good to know i hope, I hope this guy sings a song on the boat <laughs> like an animal cropping you're gonna play, you're gonna play some bagpipes <laughs> as we go i deserve that mike <laughs> <laughs> grizzden a uh, size and takes a walk up and down the dock. <laughs> Damn, you got told, didn't you? <laughs> when when he returns, he, he's, it's a, a brisk walk, so he doesn't take too long. When he gets back, I asked him which way to the surface, and he said up. Oh, okay. <laughs> you almost you almost killed him, didn't you? That's when I do most of my pacing. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, Goji's going to start fumbling in her purse for the uh, five gold that this guy requires to take us to the Goblin War Camp, because she assumes that's what's happening next. Yeah. I'll do the same. <laughs> I'm afraid we don't provide rides that go up, though. <laughs> I'm so in love with this guy. Can we keep him? He's Guys, great. can we have a class fish? <laughs> Okay. We can find a bowl big enough for him, right? Fairy, a ferryman? Yeah. Yeah, let's see. What um, what what kind of class features would that be for a ferryman? Um, the same like weapon and armor proficiency as a wizard. So none almost. <laughs> um he can move twice as fast in water and he can carry people because you know. Oh yeah, fairy. Yeah, shit. yeah. Yep. <laughs> And uh, and anytime he encounters a dead body, he gets he can collect two pieces of gold because there's gold left on the eyes. Yeah, the ferryman. True. That's good. Oh, I'm actually I'm now I'm thinking of like oh this would be a really fun that'd be a really fun class for like a darkest dungeon. That would be pretty something. cool. Yeah, or like a cleric uh, subclass. Yeah. Very you know, heavy into the theme of that part. Mm -hmm. uh, he says the his village offers other fairies. Oh, go other places. Oh, yeah. okay. So he's like, hey, they're a hub. Seems like yeah. Hmm. And uh, presumably from that. He also, hub... <clears throat> sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. He also suggests I would need a dwarf if I wanted to dig up. So. Okay. This guy's very clever. Um, he's... Actually, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Out of character, Kulatoas are fucking crazy. <laughs> they sure are. 
Um, I'm trying to find a way to slip blip dual poop into this conversation just to see what he does. Presumably, if we went to his village, which is a hub for other fairies, we would still from there be able to get to the goblin war camp if we so decided, yeah? Uh, I don't see why not, yeah. Okay, nothing precludes us from going there. We don't have to come back here to go there. Uh, I, I can ask him. Yeah. Because if that's the case, if we can still get there from where we're going, then yeah, let's go to the hub and see what our other options are. I think maybe he's got a map of the different routes. Does he have fingers? Uh, he's got web fingers. Yeah, web, yeah. I wonder if he can write with web fingers. We might have them already. I asked him your question, Pim, so... Thanks. Rain on the roof. If you were to ask this one, yes, this one can take you there for the normal fee. So we'd have to pay him again, but yeah, he could take it. Okay. Um, so it seems it's five, uh, five gold per head per trip. So not just like... Oh, I know, see. Like okay. A boss card. Yeah. <laughs> A bus card. <laughs> Welcome to the Kuotoa Metropolitan Transit System. <laughs> That's good. That's fantastic. Um, okay. Uh, I mean, I think it's. I think it's worth. Even if we have to pay again, I think it's worth five gold to figure out what our other options are at the hub. Would you guys agree? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that works for me. Okay. I've. Uh, I've already subtracted five gold from Goji's no, total. First one. I mean, well, no, no, no. Let's split it because I already subtracted five, and I don't want to go back and fucking rewrite it. Right. I'm lazy. Okay, you hand over the uh, the fifteen gold to this Kuatoa, who gives a little hop and <laughs> deposit it in this little jar that you did not see previously that oh. you got. Nothing but bones and and leftover cloth. Presumably, you're the only uh, he gave a hop <laughs> customer they've had <laughs> recently. Whether that means that he's always at this ferry or somebody else is taking care of this ferry every now and then, you don't know. Hmm. I just, I love that this guy hopped. I don't know why. It makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm so excited for him. And you all board the vessel, and <laughs> he turns it around and starts going back in the direction that he first came from. Okay. And do you guys want to do anything during your uh, little ferry to the mm, village? I'm going to take a bite of whatever dried something or other. Dried meat, dried fruit, something I've got in my, my bag. Just something to snack on. I'm not counting this as a short rest or anything, but just a character moment. And a big swig of water. I imagine I'm probably thirsty. How are you two faring in the Underdark? Have your eyes adjusted yet? Uh, before we got to this big bright room, I'd say yeah. 
Yeah. How about you? Does it feel weird to be back down here after all these years? It's colder than I remembered. Is that accompanied by your bagpipes? <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're playing That's the bagpipes that. on the lake? I want to see oh, what is you what is the. I have no idea what's going on right now, dude. What's the ferryman's response to? The, to it's, I want to I want to know what happens. What's the ferryman's response when Futon takes out the bagpipes, and then well, what's the ferryman's on, response when he starts no, playing you can't the be bagpipes? Playing your bagpipes? You can't play your bagpipes. You're singing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean I can play you in between the verses. Like, you sing, oh, sing, sing, okay. Blown. Oh, okay. <clears throat> <laughs> um. Okay. The uh, once after your initial singing and you first start doing your bagpipes, since the fair the ferryman Kuatoa has never experienced that, just completely stops the vessel and is so completely frightened that they are currently just shaking oh my god seatings. futon look what you Wondering did what is about to happen as <laughs> from out of nowhere this loud trumpeting sound is happening if you aggroed a bunch of bats again i swear to god <laughs> Oh, see, I see that and stop. And offer him to look at the bagpipes. Dude's having a panic attack. <laughs> DS exclamation points are not out of happiness. <laughs> God. If he throws us out of the boat in the middle of the lake. And he jubilantly hops back up to his feet and gives you a couple more hops and starts to uh, proceed with the ferry. Oh, damn. Uh, Goji gives Brisden a, a nod for whatever awesome pep talk he just gave. <clears throat> So do you want to continue on your little pirate song or no? <laughs> I think I'll, I'll carry on the words, but not the, the, the bagpipes. Okay. <laughs> you're okay. going gonna to chill on the bagpipes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and so you continue down the dark lake with your uh, human companion doing a dwarvish take on pirate song. <laughs> Minus the bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was that a whisper, Winston? Yeah. Okay. I just, I, yeah, I see. I see. After some time, uh, you finally reached uh, an accompaniment of uh, a very different smell. <laughs> this is not the stagnant water that you've been experiencing. This is a very fishy smell. Because, surprise, surprise, you've decided to go to a Koto village full of fish people. You can smell uh, the very strong smell of fish, mm. fish guts, Ugh. fish blood, there's everything. Uh, as you turn around the bend of an island, you finally see a, a, a water village, essentially, uh, on, on stilts and wooden posts on the water on the dark lake itself with a bunch of uh, uh uh i think 
does it not tell you exactly who understands Max, or is that just for me? Just you. Okay. Uh, no, you. He does not understand. <laughs> I don't get any response. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because it does. <laughs> If don't, tell him, at, don't tell him, don't tell him, don't tell him. If you look at your message, it doesn't say a name, does it? What do you mean? Like, do you see what you're writing in, yeah. your, in the language that you choose? You don't see a name in there, right? Uh, no, I don't know what you mean, though. Like, you wouldn't see the character you're addressing in that message, do you? No. Then that means that he wouldn't be able to tell. So if I say, if I say Goji in Orc, does it? I got no, it. I hear you. Just, yeah, just, I see. Yeah, you understand me, but it doesn't like put your name in common. No, it doesn't. No. No. Yeah, no. It doesn't do that for any language, then. No. Yeah. I think that's just on your side. That's just GMs can see who understands what right. message. Yeah. Okay. So no, person you were addressing did not understand you. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to assume not if I didn't get a response. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Um, as I was saying, the the village that you're approaching is on stilts and po wooden posts. You see that there's a bunch of shacks, and there's also actually buildings made out of shells as well. Cool. And give me a minute. Shell houses. Let's see if I can find map image that I wanted. Okay, so we're going to slaughter every fish person here, right? <laughs> that is what he expects. <laughs> he, he does. I, he's, I, I'm kind of surprised he's giving us a ride there because he he's definitely <laughs> worried that you're going to kill everybody that he, that he knows. Uh, you 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 paid this this fish man he he's very loyal to, <laughs> yeah. to the customer service yeah but come on like if <laughs> if i if i was like giving a ride to my more the race of my mortal enemies i don't know that i'd be willing to bring them to my home base even if they paid you me. got one fish man in between three different characters next to him what do you think he's gonna do i don't know hop in the ferry and just ride away <laughs> you were already been... in it oh yeah that's in the world huh yeah, that's true. He could just swim away. We'd be stuck yeah. in the middle of the water. We wouldn't know where to he go. He's still frightened by the backpipes, though. We wouldn't have that <laughs> that silt strider map that Adam posted. So that's one of the uh, Ooh, maps that I got shit. from the uh, Zipeki. Um, that's beautiful. You can't. No, I might be loading. Oh, there Brother, you are missing out. Got it now. That's gorgeous. So, this is the main reason that I went with them. Like, those other maps that you were seeing, those were just modular maps, mm -hmm. like of caves and stuff. This is These are the kind of images that they have for their maps. Wow. But yeah, along this kind of... Um, description do you see a village of the Kuatoa? Um, ignore the whole sandy thing. This is a village on wooden um, docks and posts and stilts with some okay. shell buildings and mostly shack. Got it. And this is it. The village is approximately this size, like with this many dwellings, or larger, yes, smaller. Yes, th okay. this is a. This is about how many dwellings there are in this this one Kuatoa village in this part of the cave. Damn. And your your ferryman pulls up on one of the docks, and with a another little hop. <laughs> Disclaims. He says, welcome, enjoy our stay. Uh, hold on. 
a second? <laughs> okay. Only one exclamation point there. He said, please, sure, uh, please be sure to leave a note with our head priest. I'm not sure if he's saying we need to register ourselves here or <laughs> if he's asking for a Yelp review. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a hotel or an Airbnb? Which one? I'm not sure. <laughs> That's great. He Airbnb wants a Yelp review. <laughs> crazy I give him three out of five stars. His boat smelled too fishy i gave him five. Oh, what a sucker mm -hmm. give him three stopped halfway through yeah that's right <laughs> can't I handle mean, this can't handle this bagpipe Kulatoa, music this poor Kulatoa <laughs> only charges you five gold a head how do you think he's gonna afford deodorant man i mean he's a fish i don't expect him to not be stinky that wow well, you just said you gave him three stars because he was i mean oh yeah that's true i did say that yeah you're right <laughs> you're right racially charging this man yeah i guess that's not fair is it boy the world of uh, of dark uh darkest dungeon of dungeons and dragons is hard to navigate when it's so racialized like this <laughs> Every oh, minute okay. of every day, there's something that would get you canceled in modern day Earth. <laughs> I used the um, wrong type of greeting for a wood elf, and now high elf society will not accept me. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck ever getting a job in this town, asshole. <laughs> God. Okay. So, um, so where we're where we're stationed here on the map. Um, Let's just say that you are using Goji. Let's say you guys are here. There we are. Yeah. We so is the is this clearly the hub for the other fairies? Uh, where we are, where Goji yes. is. Yes. Okay. And is there anything else in this space that catches? Um, our eye is something we'd want to investigate here before we were to move on uh well you as you can see on the map you can see that directly ahead of you and to the left there is a much larger than other buildings yeah with um, the freaking eel head sticking out of it yeah yeah, yeah exactly it's awesome <laughs> it's ursula the sea witch's house uh as far as the other ones they seem the shacks seem more like like homes for the actual Kulatoas working in the settlement. Okay. Um, as for the smaller shell houses, they may have other services, but it seems like the most prominent one is the large shell-like building in front of you. Okay. Goji um, is not even going to look and see what Brisden or Futon are thinking. She's just walking right up to that freaking shell oh, house. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't turn on... There you go. Bam! Right there. Hey. Uh, okay. So here's my question. Oh. Uh, shit. We only have eight minutes. So do you want to progress with whatever we're going to do? Or do you. I think I'd like to at least step inside this house and see, see what's going on. But I'll defer to the group. I oh, don't mind. I'd say we could at least go and meet yeah. Yeah, the head priest or whoever's in here. Have to hand in our reviews. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hand in okay. <our> reviews. <laughs> Four stars, easy driver, yeah. no snack, no music. Okay. Got mad when we tried to put our own music in his uh, <laughs> in his aux cord. <laughs> kinda kinda right belief so you don't mess with somebody else's shit. Um <laughs> If I'm in an Uber and they don't let me play my music, you're losing a star. 
you enter the the shell building, and as you enter, the fishy smell that you were quite potently uh, smelling is somewhat diminished. Oh. And inside, you can see that the interior walls of the shell are actually multicolored, much like you would see in a decorative shell. Yeah, cool. Um, you can see pinks, you can see purples and reds. Um, and you can also see that that's about the most pretty colorful thing because the rest of it is littered with trash, random belongings, uh, cluttered throughout the building there are stands of, of ruined uh, gear um, broken furniture Shit. very haphazard in a mad chaotic way and you can see that there is no one currently attending this room, but there is a doorway leading further into the building um, and as you progress into it I'm sorry. I'm trying not to read Discord. Uh, yeah, as you progress to it, <laughs> you can see that it has a similar decoration style, shall we say. Uh, the building itself is pretty, but everything else is not. Much hmm. like the mind of a normal Kuotoa. Got it. Is there anybody in here? Uh, in the first few rooms, you do not find anybody, but as you progress, you hear that there is chanting, chanting occurring further in. And as you make your way towards that chanting, you find that there is a an interior that seems to have been dug downward into the dark lake and made out of shells. To encapsulate the room itself leaving enough water to be allowed into it to layer the bottom of the room but still be underneath the actual dark lake surface and you can Crazy. see inside of this chamber the following image oh yeah let's see it let's see it Holy shit. I don't know if you guys... Whoa. Okay. Never mind it. So you do. Yeah. And... Right. Yeah, just okay. We're in heaven. <laughs> so you are stepping now into this like bridge-like thing of multi-faceted colors of pinks and blues and reds. But you don't see the cluttering of debris until past this bridge. And past this bridge, you see steps leading upwards into an altar of coral and uh, uh, other kinds of uh, sea fauna and sea flora. And at the very midpoint of those steps, you see a kuatoa larger than the one you saw mm -mm. ferrying you. Uh, in a basin and humming and chanting to the figure that sits upon the throne that you can see from where you are at. You cannot make any distinctions on the figure for you are a bit too far to make the, that kind of distinction but they appear to be humanoid and just gazing down on the on the priest below him. Whoa. And I think that's a good stopping point. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Oh, dude, this is awesome. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I can't wait to abuse this guy and get some answers. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to treat this king like absolute shit. I guarantee it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that went well. Yeah. And... Thanks, guys. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Appreciate all the hard work that goes into it. Yes, thank you. Thank I thought, you. 
I thought the whole language thing was hilarious. That was great. I had a blast. I love <laughs> what's his name? Logo May. He's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's Logo May. Really good for him, man. Like, dude, when <laughs> you <laughs> when you gave me that ammo again to the surface, I was like, I can't believe that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you can go up. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I'm really glad you guys are enjoying this system. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? It's just makes it worth it. <laughs> this is an avalanche of dice rolls. Sorry. Are you just are you just doing this? Are you just throwing like? Yeah, just doing them one at a time. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, Mike, thank you very much for uh, doing all the hard work here. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, my God. Sorry. I, I <laughs> How many dice rolls does it take to crash Fantasy Grounds, I wonder? Do we want to find out? Let's, let's go. <laughs> okay, let's all, on the count of three, roll 20 times d20. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, roll. Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck is that? It's lagging. How did you do that? You can hotkey. Oh my god. However many dice, frankly. Let's see. I'm gonna hotkey. Oh, you crashed the chat. You crashed yeah, the chat. I can't even pick up the dice. <laughs> <laughs> the chat is just like, no, fuck that. We're starting over. <laughs> That's so great. Dream like, and I like to go back and keep the chats. <laughs> no, there's an out, outside source. <laughs> oh my god! I think they're getting deleted underneath all of this. I think so. I, I think so, because there's no way. Look how much yeah. it's slowing down. It's even going over the damn yeah. board now. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Imagine the microplastics created by that many die oh my god. <laughs> being created. Wow, you have to scroll quite a while. Damn! Of that. Holy shit! It uh, it so seems to have retained all of them though. Yeah. You didn't like, junk them. Like another hockey. My fans going like crazy now. <laughs> oh, <sorry>. You're <laughs> gonna crash all of our computers. <laughs> You're not even crashing the I mean, that's pretty impressive. That the I know. You're not even crashing the program. You're crashing somebody's yeah. computer, dude. Yeah. <laughs> dude, we could take down the international capitalist economy if we just got on, like, True. on the CEO yeah. president of Chase's <laughs> uh, computer yeah. and rolled a bunch of die at once. The whole. You could definitely automate it. Downloading Fantasy Grounds, opening it, and then doing that until the computer <laughs> yeah. ignites. Uh, let's see. I gotta get to my quarterly earnings report. Oh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Call the president. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> That's all we can do. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm gonna stop the recording.